All right, what's happening? What's happening? Instagram. It is Monday. Let's go. It is officially. Am I really working for the man Monday? And today's topic is on the subconscious mind. So bear with me, right? This is a pretty deep topic to talk about. Uh, actually, as a matter of fact, right, not only is this a chapter in Thinking Real Rich, but this this one topic alone is its own book, right? There's actually this one book out there called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. And, you know, it's one of the greatest books I've ever read on this topic. But I'm going to do my best to, to talk about it today and kind of just keep the conversation surface level so that it's easy to follow and understand. But you know, this is this is pretty important stuff because essentially, you know, the whole entire book of Think and Grow Rich, right, was was written, right? The entire 13 steps towards riches were written to, to essentially influence your subconscious mind. Because it's through the subconscious mind, right? It's it's how do I put this, right? It, it's you know, the end goal is to take the action, right? The end goal is to take the action. You're never gonna you know, actually do something to get rich without taking action, right? And how do you take the action? Well, you have to first influence the subconscious mind, right? It has to become habitual, these actions, right? The difference between you and successful people is that successful people habitually do the things that most other people do not like to do, right? So, you know, the, the idea here is, okay, you know, a couple of things I'm going to be talking about is how do we start influence our, influencing our subconscious mind, and how do we start, you know, taking what we got to do and making it habitual, right? That's going to be, you know, the secret right there. So, um, you know, without further ado, the things I'm going to talk about today is, of course, you know, I'm going to go over, you know, what is the subconscious mind and talk a little bit more about that. And then I'm going to additionally, you know, talk about the importance of, of you know, emotions and the idea of, you know, planting the right emotions into your subconscious mind. Right. In a, in a you know, brief intro on that. Right. Essentially, you know, the way like us humans, right, humans are emotional creatures. Right. So, you know, a lot of the actions that we take are based on our emotions. Right. And then what we'll do is we'll we'll do something maybe silly or dumb and then justify it later with our intellect. Right. So the idea is to, to talk about, you know, planting the right emotions into your subconscious mind. And I'll get more into that a little further down the road. And then I'm going to talk about habits. I'm going to talk about installing the right habits into your subconscious mind, right? Because having the right habits is what's going to absolutely positively serve you in the long run, right? This is a game right, of success. The game of success is all based on what habits you have, right? If, if an individual is incredibly overweight, I can just assume by looking at them that they have different habits than an individual who is who is in great shape right it comes down to your habits this is more than just making money this comes down to all areas of your life what habits are you right essentially i'm getting ahead of myself but essentially you are the sum total of all your habits so that's going to be pretty important to to talk about now let's get back to the to the beginning right i'm going to talk about the subconscious mind what is it and where do I even start? Because uh, I want you to think of like, you know, the Titanic going towards the iceberg, right? There's the tip of the iceberg, right? That's, you know, everything that you think you know. And then you know how the iceberg gets super deep underwater, right? That's the subconscious mind, right? The subconscious mind, it's freaking deep. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share some ideas that you probably have never really heard before. But I guess a, a good simile for the subconscious mind would be this, right? Think of it like a filing cabinet, right? Every single thing that happens to you, every single thought that you have, every single action that you take, every single, single thing that you speak, that you hear, that happens in your life, gets recorded into your subconscious mind. And it is essentially stored away in a filing cabinet. Maybe you have you know, different categories for, for going back on certain memories. And so that's what I want you to think of it as. Like, think of it as a filing cabinet that stores every single piece of information that you experience in your life. It just stores it all away. Now, Napoleon Hill says a pretty bold statement. 
that I'm going to repeat. And, you know, this is Napoleon Hill's words, right? He says actually that the subconscious mind is the connecting link between the finite mind of man and infinite intelligence. Okay, so, right, that's a, that's a pretty big statement, right? The, the connecting link between your mind and infinite intelligence. And yes, I do feel a little bit, um, right, I, I don't know how to describe this feeling, right? Talking about that, but I'm talking about, you know, the connecting link between your mind, the mind of man, and infinite intelligence, right? Additionally, right, it's the medium of communication between the thinking human mind and infinite intelligence, Right, so if you wanna, if you wanna, you know, speak to inf infinite intelligence, right? It comes down to using the subconscious mind as the connecting link, right? So I think it might be important to start figuring out, okay, how can I properly influence this? All right. So now I want to transition here to to talking about, you know, how your subconscious mind essentially acts on on emotions, right? Especially us as human beings. Right. Think about this. Right. We act on emotions and then we justify it later with our intellect. So what I'm saying here is that that, you know, whatever dominating desires, whatever dominating emotions that you are filling up right, with your thinking, right, that's what you're going to act upon. And think about this. Right. Have you ever you know, had this this the negative emotion of, of being incredibly angry? Right. Something happened to you. You were incredibly angry. And you therefore did something inc super stupid or incredibly dumb because of that emotion, right? You acted on it. Maybe you punched a hole in your wall. Maybe you broke something out of out of anger, right? There's been times where I, I've, you know, when I was, you know, not emotionally intelligent, that I would, you know, act on out of anger, and you know, negative consequences, of course, occurred, right? It's because your subconscious mind, right? You take the actions on whatever emotion is dominating your mind okay so so the idea now is can we understand you know the positive emotions or can we understand the positive emotions so that you know habitually we start feeling these every single day every single moment i'm thinking in terms of the positive stream versus the negative side right because if i'm you know thinking with with desire and faith etc right wouldn't that end up with me, you know, taking the right actions towards towards the end goal, towards my definite major purpose? Okay, so so now let me let me um, talk about you know right what are the seven major positive emotions and the seven major negative emotions and why this is absolutely essential to understand. All right, because you know I'll, I'll just start it off like I said right only emotionalized thoughts have any action influence upon the subconscious mind, right? Yeah, you may say you want something, but if you're not like, incredibly emotional about it, or if you're not incredibly emotional about it in a positive way, right, you're never going to go out there and go do it, all right? So the, the let's start it off, right? The number one emotion is desire, right? And let me let me say this right. These emotions aren't in any order. Right? I'm just this is the order I have them listed on my paper, right? So the number one is the desire, right? And number two is faith. So think about this, right? I'm talking about the top two emotions, right? Desire and faith, right? That is the first two principles in think and grow rich, right? Is desire and faith, right? So understand, right? What is an emotion? Let me let me pause there, right? What is an emotion, right? An emotion is simply a state of mind. Right. Emotion stands for energy in motion. Right. So if if you really think about it, right, emotions, when, when I'm talking about a state of mind, I'm literally talking about like a different chemical formula that's happening in your brain. Right. When I'm talking about your state of mind. So so you know, one thing that Napoleon Hill talks about is going back, right? The entire purpose of thinking or rich, right? The 13 steps towards riches are the stimuli. Which, which you acquire the ability to reach and influence your subconscious mind, right? Desire and faith are simply just stimuli so that you stimulate your brain to actually start thinking and acting a certain way. And Wallace C. Waddle says it himself, right, from the Science of Getting Rich. He says it's not about doing certain things. It's about doing things in a certain way. All right, so let me get back to the, the positive emotions here and uh, keep going, right? So we got desire, faith. Next is love and sex. 
right? Those are also really powerful emotions if you know how to use them in the right way. Number five is enthusiasm, right? Let me let me pause there on the word enthusiasm, right? Especially if you're a salesman, right? What do people buy, right? People don't buy on logic alone, right? They buy from emotion. And of course, it has to have a logical reason behind it, but people buy from emotion. And enthusiasm being one of the most powerful emotions, right? Most positive emotions, right? Especially as a salesman, it is your duty to convey enthusiasm with, with each word that you speak to your prospect, or else you're not going to get them emotionalized enough to, to be enthusiastic at, of purchasing with you, right? So enthusiasm is absolutely essential. And then six and seven is romance and hope, all right? So to repeat, right, we got desire, faith, love, sex, enthusiasm, romance, and hope, right? Those are the seven major positive emotions. And maybe, you know, you don't yet feel those, feel those emotions on a habitual level, right? The idea here is to start planning these emotions into our subconscious mind so that we're taking the right actions. Yes, of course, we need a definite plan, right? We need a definite plan. We need all the other things with persistence, right? You know, we got to follow through our, with our plan with the idea that there's no such thing as failure, right? And, and the only way for, for us to do that is to have that certain state of mind. We right, so have that certain state of mind where there's only, we only let you know the positive emotions control our state of mind, right? Because if we have the negative ones in there, right, that's going to hold us back from taking the action. And if we're not taking the action, we're obviously not getting anywhere. All right. So now let me talk about what are the the top seven negative emotions that that we need to start getting rid of. And these may be emotions that you know you you may be feeling right now. What's happening, Schwang? Right, these may be emotions that you're feeling right now, but you know, at the end of the day, we got to get those out of there, right? So, number one is fear. Number two is jealousy. Number three is hatred. Number four is revenge. Number five is greed. Number six is superstition, and number seven is anger. Okay, so with with these emotions, right? You know, fear, jealousy, hatred. Right? Do you think you're going to be taking effective action? Right? If, you're, if you are in a state of mind known as fear, do you think you're going to be taking effective action? Right? What happened during COVID? Right? What they did, right? what the news did so well to keep everyone locked up is that they employed mass fear. Right? They employed mass fear among the, the people of America and, of course, the whole world experienced this right? so that people would just hide in their homes. Right? So these were negative states of mind, right? Of course, you know, most people were not getting things done. They were not getting rich when they had these certain states of mind. Now, there was other individuals that, that didn't let this stop them and still became millionaires, even when there was mass fear, okay? And then additionally, right, hatred, revenge, and greed, right? You know, if, you, if you're acting out of those emotions, if those emotions are filling up your mind, where is that going to get you? Where is that going to get you? If, you? if you're focused so much on getting revenge with people, how do you possibly expect to get rich? How do you possibly expect to get rich if you are so focused on getting revenge on someone? Right? You're going to end up going towards the end goal, which is getting revenge on somebody, and you're never going to make it to becoming rich. Right? So finally, you know, even the last one, like anger. Right? Acting out of anger is not going to get you anywhere anywhere that that's with progress etc all right so let me you know right you, you know the seven positive emotions seven negative emotions so what right the idea is so what why does this matter right the idea here is you know we gotta properly start being definite with how we're thinking so that our you know all the negative emotions in our mind you know we replace them with the positive emotions because the truth is, right, you can only have one single thought at a time, right? You can only have one single thought at a time. It's either positive or it's negative, right? And if you are, are experiencing a positive thought or a positive emotion, right, then you can't feel a negative emotion. And it's vice versa, right? If you're negative in a negative state of mind, right, you can't feel positive at the same exact time. Now, of course, you can go back and forth, but but the idea here is, okay, we got to become a habitual about having the positive emotions influence our mind if we want to take the right actions, right? 
you know, it, it, that's what I'm saying. Like desire, faith, right? Those are states of mind, right? We are, we are, we are building this specific state of mind, right? This certain money consciousness that's going to help us take the right actions towards our goals, right? That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about influencing your subconscious mind, right? Now, let's um. Let's talk about habits, right? Because Napoleon Hill says this, right? You know, like I said, positive and negative emotions cannot occupy the, the mind at the same time, right? It's either one or the other, right? It's either one or the other. So, so the idea here is this, right? We want to form the habit of applying and using the positive emotions. Now, many people will think, well, you know, why do I have to be positive all the time, right? Well, Let's go to the starting point, right? You clearly don't have a definite major purpose if you don't understand the importance of being positive all the time, of having positive emotions all the time, right? The end goal is the end goal, right? My definite major purpose is still the same definite major purpose. What's going to help me get there, right? Is it having positive emotions or negative emotions, right? Clearly, it's going to be having positive emotions, of emotions that are going to help me take the right action in a state of enthusiasm, have that burning desire for more, have that faith that it's already done. Right. It, it's these positive emotions that are going to help me out. Right. So you, so you got to get clear on, on exactly you know, what your definite major purpose is. Right? What is your end goal? And then you'll have a reason to start habitually you know, forming the habit. OK, I got to have, you know, the right positive emotions occupy my entire mind. All right. Like I said, you know, it all starts. All individual achievement starts with a definite major purpose. All right. And now let's talk about, you know, the habit of having these positive emotions. Right. Because. You know, eventually, right. Napoleon Hill says this, right, form the habit of applying and using the positive emotions. Eventually, they will dominate your mind so completely that the negatives cannot enter. Right. Essentially, you know, getting rich is it's the same formula for everyone. Right. What we're doing here is we're using our thinking. We're cultivating a mindset to to see nothing but how can it get done right there's only like we we can't be asking oh questions of of oh i i'm not good enough etc why can't i do this no we got to ask one question how can it get done or well, we need to know exactly what we want and we have to go out and find the answers to get it right and in order for us to actually hear the answers in order for us to actually see the answers it's going to require a certain state of mind Right? And you're going to have to be diligent at cultivating this state of mind right? where your mindset is filled with positive emotions of how I can do this. Right? It it's all becomes habitual. Right? Bob Proctor says, do the thing until you don't have to do the thing. Maybe it's difficult for you to think with a positive mental attitude. Maybe this is a challenge. Right? But what I'm saying is, you know, continue to, to implement, right? Being you know, having the positive emotions, right, occupy your mind, and eventually you'll wake up naturally with positive emotions, okay? It's it's going to become a natural habit for you, but you got to start, right? I, I, there was a period in my life where a ton of negative emotions consumed my mindset, but that didn't get me anywhere, right? That didn't get me any results that I wanted. So I had to start implementing it. Okay, how can I start thinking better, so that I can get the results that I want, right? And and so that's that's what it comes down to, right? This is going to become a habit, right? All success is every single day, you know, what habits am I doing every single day? Are they helping me or are they hurting me, right? You're either growing or you're dying. There's no, there's no staying stagnant, right? A lot of people think I'm stuck. No, you're either growing or you're dying. That is literally a law of nature, right? Everything moves, right? We live in an ocean of motion. Right, so are your habits, are they serving you or are they hurting you? Right, it's absolutely essential. And I highly recommend, you know, you start, you start focusing on, on building better habits. Right? And the only way to do so is to have a motive behind it, right? to have a burning desire to, to actually do better. Right? It starts, like I said, with having a definite major purpose. All right. So one last uh, point that I want to make on on, you know, installing the right habits really comes down to this. Right. There's this one book out there. It's called uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear. And that book was absolutely essential, essential for me 
to to begin installing the habits, right? Because really, one thing I'm learning as I'm as I'm going through this journey, and and no, I'm not there at massive levels of success, but what I am saying is, you know, it's only a handful of things, right? What I'm learning from my mentor is it's only a handful of things that you need to start installing, that you live out on a daily basis, these certain habits that you are eventually no matter what, going to win, right? It's, it's For me, you know, it came down, right? One of the habits that changed my life especially was waking up at 5 a.m. every weekday. Waking up at 5 a.m., not sleeping in, getting up right away, right? That habit has served me in so many ways, especially for my morning, to get my mind right, right? It's only a handful of things. You know, the habit of, of publicly speaking, right? If I have a habit of publicly speaking, and then I get presented this opportunity to actually public speak on a main stage, right? It's going to feel so much more natural for me if I've already been working on the habit, right? It's all about establishing, installing the right habits, okay? So so I, I really hope, like, you know, the one takeaway that you take from this is, you know, the one way to influence your subconscious mind is through feeling and emotion, right? We act out of emotion. Why don't we start installing being intentional about what emotions we have because we know we're going to act on it right and then additionally right the idea of forming the habit right because you know the subconscious mind right that's a deep conversation but you know this we can do right i can focus on on being positive of having a burning desire of having faith of being enthusiastic as hell of having hope that it's going to work out right i i know that that these positive emotions are going to help me in the long run Right? And I'm either going to take action on negative emotions or positive emotions. It's up to you to decide which ones you want, right? which is going to help you get to the end goal. Okay, so that was the conversation today on the subconscious mind. You know, I talked a lot, but uh, to wrap this up, right, I talked about, you know, what is the subconscious mind? Basically, it's like a filing cabinet. Everything that has happened in your life is filed and stored away into your subconscious mind. Okay, and additionally, right, the whole purpose of thinking you're rich is to, to, like, the entire 13 steps are the stimuli, right? The stimuli, which you acquire the ability to reach and influence your subconscious mind, right? Every emotion that I just talked about, every principle that I've been talking about is essentially meant to influence your subconscious mind. Hey, Renee, right? Every single principle in this book is meant to influence your subconscious mind. So it's absolutely essential that we start working on, on the positive ones that are going to help us take the right actions. And then finally, I talked a little bit about uh, the emotions, right, and how, you know, right, we're emotional creatures. We act out of emotion and we then justify it by logic and reason or our intellect, right? So, right, the, the feeling is the secret, right? It's all about installing the right emotions and, and making it a habitual part of your daily living. Okay, so that's the conversation today uh, on on this principle of thinking you're rich. I want to thank you all for tuning in. And uh, without further ado, I'll catch you all tomorrow. Same time, same channel. I'll be talking about the brain, actually, and uh, look forward to that conversation as well. So I'll leave you with this, right? Until we meet again in time and space, Instagram. Have a great day, everybody. Happy Monday. And uh, bye, everybody, for now.